We are now one game away from Grand Champion with a piano controller. <laughs> So about a year ago, I saw this tweet from Spook Luke saying that you can get Grand Champion Rocket League with zero mechanics. What? It's a pretty bold take, at least bold enough that it was seen by thousands of passionate players and started a debate that got pretty heated between some people. Now, for me personally, I actually agree with this. I think this is true. But in all honesty, I can see why so many people will die on the hill that this is false. The main evidence that people use to prove this is all those Road to SSL series that so many people have made. But like, come on, let's be real, those hardly prove of anything. Like sure, they're not doing anything flashy, but precision and consistency are the most important parts of mechanics. And all of this gameplay is infinitely more precise and consistent than everyone else in their lobbies. Some of them do a really good job of keeping everything as simple as possible, but just because it's simple doesn't make it not mechanical, you know what I mean? Bounce dribbles are something I see all the time in these series, and while it is really simple, like you're literally just driving left and right at the proper times, it has to be one of the most difficult mechanics to actually master. I still can't even do it that well, and I have thousands of hours in this game. I just think it's unfair to call these videos no mechanics. All the hard evidence out there that proves this point correct kind of tends to crumble when you actually take a closer look, which is exactly where I got this idea. I've got this mini keyboard right here that I figured out how to hook up as a controller in my games. Theoretically, this should restart my mechanics down to zero again, but I couldn't be sure until I actually tried it out for myself. This is like impossible. Uh, uh, wait, <laughs> this way? No, no, let's hit it in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, air dribble. It's safe to say that my mechanics are out the window right now. If I can get Grand Champion on this thing, then that should put an end to this whole debate. I got my piano right here. <laughs> And we're gonna, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for Grand Champion with a piano controller. I decided to stream my entire run up the ranks on Twitch, mainly because I had a feeling that there would be a few non-believers out there. Full disclosure, this technically wasn't my first time ever using a piano as a controller because about a year and a half ago, I spent an entire day with it to prove something similar. But as I started playing, it became clear that none of that skill had translated to now. It was pretty much a clean slate. Only difference it made was that I was starting around Diamond 2 MMR instead of way down in the depths, which is pretty convenient. While there were a few doubters in the stream at the start, I shut them down pretty quickly with a win streak to begin the journey. Let's go, dude! Let's go! Let's freaking go, man! Dude, that is such a carry! Yeah! Yes! <laughs> okay, we're good. A hundred percent. I'm just gonna plop it, make them work. Who knows they miss? Yeah. Literally. Literally. Literally, that's all you need. It's open! Did I score? Let's go, dude! Let's go! This isn't the best. We're good, we're good. Nice. Let's go! Yes! As much as I'd like to say that the win streak continued on for the whole session, my luck was unfortunately limited. I didn't really go into this challenge with a plan. I kind of just knew that I'd rank up as long as I did my job. It was definitely working, but not as efficiently as I'd hoped. At this rate, it was gonna take me weeks to reach grand champion, as I kept taking two steps forward, one step back, due to the dice roll of teammates at this level. Oh! No! What is this? What is this, man? This is ridiculous. By the end of the session, I had a record of 12 wins, 10 losses. A step in the right direction, just a very, very tiny one. It was clear that coming into the next day, I needed to come up with a new strategy. If you get GC, I will be shocked. We, we will see. I'll say the goal is champ today, but we'll see. Yesterday we had some very unlucky games, but hopefully, hopefully it goes better. The plan for day two was completely different. I would start off the same in solo queue, just doing my job and hoping it goes well. But because I learned yesterday how dependent these games were on my teammates, I would keep my eye out for some particularly mechanical players that I thought I could make a decent run with. I knew that I would rank up eventually if I solo queued the whole time, but since I was trying to reach grand champ in only a few days, I figured this strategy would get me up there a lot quicker. Yes. No, what a save. What's oh, awkward? Let's go, let's go. After a pretty successful start with solo queue, being 10 and six so far, I ran into a particular player that I immediately meshed with. So when they asked me to party up, 
it was a no-brainer. And from that point on, we went on tough. a tear. Oh, shoot. No way! No way! Bang. Let's go. I'm staying. Let's freaking go, dude! Let's go! Champion! Let's go, champion! Oh my god, that's so laggy. Ah! What happened? No, she knocked the camera down. It's working. <laughs> As I kept playing with this guy, it became more and more clear that he was definitely underranked, which I felt kind of bad about. Chat let me know that he was apparently a GC2's main with almost no games in threes, which makes a lot of sense in hindsight. Some people said I was just getting carried, which is actually a wild take, considering if you were actually watching, it was pretty obvious I was keeping up just fine. But regardless, we went on an insane win streak for hours. It seemed like we couldn't be stopped. The goal for the day was champ one, but I totally exceeded that and finished all the way up at champion two. Let's go. Still, some people were predicting that as soon as I solo queued again, I would immediately rank back down since they thought I was just getting carried. I knew they were wrong, but I decided to call the day on a high note and come back tomorrow to prove it. Again, the plan is try and find someone that is like mechanically good. Even if they're bad at rotations, you know, it's not a big deal. I can kind of like just play around them. As long as they've got, got mechanics and can score on their own, that's who we need to find or compensate. Go in. Let's go, let's go. Good start, good start. Let's go. First game dub. So I'm getting demoed, so I'm just gonna play it there. Should be open. Let's go. Open space, but it doesn't matter. Very nice. 2-0, let's go. Oh, he's stay he's going, so I'm gonna stay. Let's go. That right there. Me noticing quick that my teammate cut me off. I guarantee like any other champ would not save what I just did right there. <laughs> nice. Let's go. A very strong start at champ two in solo cube solidified the fact that I definitely earned my way up here. In case you're wondering how my controls are laid out, it's actually very similar to keyboard and mouse. I've got my equivalent WASD in similar positions, as well as power slide and ball cam nearby, and my boost and jump are controlled by my right hand. Obviously, I've never been a KBM player, I've always just used controller, so no matter what, this is going to be a huge learning curve for me. But at least the movements could somewhat make sense in my brain, so I knew which button did what. Just the unavoidable downside was that it was extremely hard to get a feel for how far I had to press down each key for them to register, which basically made small and precise movements near impossible. Fortunately though, that was the whole point of this entire challenge, to show that you don't need consistency or precision to climb the ranks. And even at champ two, that was still proving to be completely true. Let's go, let's go. Good self setup. Good fake. Good fake, let's go. <laughs> nice, yes, GG. You say, oh! <laughs> Should have that. <gasps> oh, oh my god! Yo! Oh my god! What? What the heck? What the heck? It's easy to look at these highlights and be like, wait, this guy's actually insane on piano. What the heck? But it's important to keep in mind that for every highlight on here, there's about two or three moments I don't show where I miss in a way that no one else at this rank ever would. I figured you'd rather see the good moments instead of the bad ones, so I'm showing way more of those. But don't let that fool you into thinking I'm just a god somehow. I will say though that my mechanics did take a step up on day three, particularly in the air. On previous days, I was pretty much lost whenever I jumped up for something, probably the mechanical level of your average plat one all around. But on day three, something clicked and I'd estimate I jumped up to around plat three level mechanically. My inconsistency is still off the charts. There really isn't a single mechanic I can truly rely on for myself. Not even half flips, unfortunately. So while I am capable of shooting on target sometimes or even hitting some nice aerials occasionally, I wouldn't say I have any of these things down enough to call them remotely consistent. Follow? It's up to me. Yes! <laughs> you got that. Nice shot. Let's go! Let's go! Ooh, miss it. Oh, that's the best save of my entire life. Okay. The best piano player in Rocket League. MVP, please. Plus 10? Give it to me. Come on. Yes! Yes! Let's go! Oh my god! Oh my god!
<laughs> yes! I wanted that so bad. I wanted that so bad. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are champ three currently, one rank away. Are you SSL? No, I'm, I'm G, the thing is, I'm GC one on my main in threes right now. <laughs> if I get GC today, I will be the same rank on my main as my piano controller account. I came into day four feeling on top of the world, knowing that I was on the home stretch of finishing this whole challenge. Game one started off great as we got a two goal lead and the first solo queue team seemed to be doing more than fine together. But just when I thought we would start out with another hot streak, the unthinkable happened. Save it. Dang, I needed him to be there sooner. We're good, still winning. No, 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 no. Don't, don't ruin the team morale, we're winning. No, no. Zeus, what have you done? Save it. Nice. What have you... Dude, Zeus is actually throwing by typing like that. Finn's actually throwing now, dude. Come on, man. This game went about as you would expect. A likely win turned into a guaranteed loss due to factors completely outside of my control. This experience really convinced me that I needed to find some good teammates in solo queue as quickly as possible again. Fortunately, I still had champ 3 for the moment, but unfortunately, that didn't last long as the next game, the team chemistry was just not there at all. A quick derank from champ 3 was not the ideal start, to say the least. But thanks to a solid mentality and strong fortitude, I queued into the next game with my confidence still I'm, intact. I, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna get it right back. If I keep playing like this, I will surely just rank right back up. Go in. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Please. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, nice. Yes. Okay, that's GG. <laughs> Yeah, we got it. We got it right back. We're chilling, guys. Shortly after getting Champ Three right back, I found the teammates that I would end up queuing with for that day. The games were definitely getting harder and harder. There was a point for like an hour where we just kept alternating between wins and losses. But since we continued to play well, we eventually kept climbing slowly but surely. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Once again, my mechanics were gradually improving as I kept playing, whether I liked it or not. It was still obvious I was the least mechanical player in every single lobby by far, but I think it's only fair to mention because that is something that was changing as it went on. I'd put myself equivalent to the average Diamond 1 mechanically at this point. And I say that because as I continued to approach Grand Champion, I somehow hit this absolute peak of a shot out of nowhere. Should be free hit. <gasps> oh my god! Yo! Another clip! <laughs> yes! That transition from the wall to the air was a lot quicker than it would have been on day one, that's for sure. Since progress was getting slower, I didn't quite finish the job on day four. Got pretty close, was only about five games away, but I decided that I'd attempt to finally reach that finish line tomorrow. Five games off. We should be five games off. Make that save. Got no boost, that's a pass. Let's go, nice play. You may have recognized this guy. Yep, that's the same guy that we parted up with on day two back at low champ. I said he was underranked and well, I guess I was right because he was now in my lobby again at high champ three. We queued into each other twice in a row to start it off, both times being on the same team. Fortunately, since we already had that buff of knowing how each other played, those games went very smoothly and we ended up pulling out a win on both of them. An excellent way to start off the session. From there, I was just three games away and continued to climb. He missed the change up. Yo, let's go. What a shot, top corner. No, he's beating. Wait, <laughs> keep the morale up. We got this, score it. Let's go, dude, let's go. By three, yeah, let's go, MVP. The next game, unfortunately, ended with a loss. It just couldn't be that easy on the final day, but the match after, we saw that familiar face once again, only on the other team this time. I feel like this was just a perfect way to slap a bookend on this whole thing, as I was now facing my former teammate on the final day of this challenge. The great part about it was that his strength was very clearly mechanics, hence the name that he was using, but mine, obviously, was the complete opposite, all game sense. So it kind of acted like a symbolic way to see which strength was superior 
career in the game of Rocket League. After a relatively even match though, Game Sense would reign supreme as we close it out for the dub. Definitely a good feeling. And after another close win in the next game, we were finally five minutes away from the finish line. We are now one game away from Grand Champion. The Grand Champion game. Good clear. That should be a shot. Open. Shoot it. Let's go. Let's go. No. Why are we forfeiting? What happened? Although we started out well with an early goal in the most important game of the challenge, the tables quickly turned as we started whiffing and losing hope as a team almost instantly. That game was unfortunately not the last one in the session. And apparently, I'm just not allowed to have nice things because Rocket League decided to gatekeep me with unfortunate lobbies for four rank up games in a row. I'm not even kidding. So to end the curse, I finally decided to team up and finish the job. And it seemed like that was all I truly needed to become the first ever grand champion piano player in Rocket League. One game I get GC is I'm getting carried. Miss it? Nice bomb. Whatever, whatever, you know, you know, what? you know, what? hey, grand champion is grand champion and take a look and take a look. Let's go. If you're feeling motivated and want to learn about the strategies I use to accomplish this whole thing, there's a link in the description to an unlisted video where I go more in depth on the educational side of this whole thing. So to answer that original question of can you get grand champion with zero mechanics, in my opinion, the answer is clearly yes. But perhaps a more important question, should you get GC with zero mechanics? I would have to say no. This was an absolute nightmare. I would not recommend. But anyway, that's about it. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.